You ready to watch me jump over this? Let's see if I can do it. So guys, this property on Sterling in Mesa, Arizona started out having no equity. People have this belief that all these investors and all these people are buying properties with equity. No, we're not. Good things come to those who wait. I don't expect my Tesla charger to charge in 15 freaking seconds. By the way, we're at a property that started out having no equity, but here we are three years later, this property has $300,000 in equity because I was patient. So guys, this property on Sterling in Mesa, Arizona started out having no equity. And what's funny is I look at all these other houses in the neighborhood, every homeowner is buying houses on the MLS through real estate agents that have no equity. They're selling them Homeowners are selling them at top dollar, home buyers are buying them at top dollar and starting out with no equity. So people have this belief that all these investors and all these people are buying properties with equity. No, we're not. The difference between you and me is that I'm willing to buy a deal with no equity and I'm willing to use patience. Patience. So today we're gonna to be going to not only this property on Sterling, go see the walkthrough of how I bought this property, link in the description down below, but we're gonna be visiting another property that has the exact same situation, almost looks identical to this. And we're gonna talk about how patience in real estate is a key component. You can't expect a Tesla to charger to charge in five minutes. It takes sometimes six hours, but it doesn't keep me from plugging it in and waiting. You just gotta do it appropriately. You plug your Tesla charger in overnight. It's the same thing with this property. I turn into an Airbnb and while it's Airbnb and while the Airbnb is cash flowing, the property is going up in value very, very slowly. It's kind of like a trickle charge on a Tesla. And I wait until it's all the way up to 230 miles and then we can get in and drive away. So guys, have you ever heard of set it and forget it? That's what we do in real estate, right? We buy a property, equity or no equity, typically properties in sub two, we are buying them without equity, okay? But we are setting up an Airbnb or we're setting up a sober living facility or we're setting up a traditional rental or a section eight or corporate housing or whatever it is, we are setting and forgetting. The cash continues to come in every single month because it's an operational business. That property on Sterling brings in roughly $3,000 a month in net cash flow. And what does net cash flow mean? It means that that property generates about $7,000 a month on an Airbnb rental. And what happens is we have a $1,900 Wells Fargo payment that we take, we pay subject to Dave's original mortgage. We have Airbnb management fees, utilities, cleaning, all the things you can imagine with taxes, insurance, those types of things. And that property, after all those expenses, brings in roughly $3,000 a month. So while I set up the Airbnb, the property that started out with no equity starts climbing in value. And then also the great thing is my Airbnb guests are the ones that are paying off my mortgage. They're paying off my private money lenders. They're paying my utilities. The tenants of my Airbnb are the ones that are paying my debt. So when people are over complicating this whole equity situation and the debt structure, the only thing I care about is can I set it and forget it? Can I set it up into an Airbnb and can I forget that there's any debt because I'm not the one paying it? My tenants are paying it for me. Now, this property has done incredibly well, but today we're gonna to be going to a property down in Santan Valley. That's about 50 miles that way. And the property we're going to, an agent named Debbie and her seller have had this house vacant for over, let's see, April to May, May to June, June to July, July to August, August, September, September to October, October to November. They've had this property seven months making monthly payments on a nearly brand new house. And what's funny is this house, Sterling, looks identical to this house. We're gonna pull up to it today. I'm gonna to be walking through the property with the agent who could not sell it on the market, does not know what to do, they're not getting any offers. And I'm gonna go in there and we're gonna talk about patience. We're gonna talk about me looking at their problem. Their biggest problem is equity. The seller doesn't have enough equity to sell the property. And if they sold the property today, they'd have to cut a check out of their pocket. 
That's not what sellers wanna do. So if you're an agent watching this and you have a seller that is in a no equity situation, bring those opportunities to me or bring those opportunities to my students nationwide. We have about 7,000 students all over the United States, all 50 cities, I'm sorry, all 50 states. We have a very, very strong uh, sub two community that can help you guys out with no equity deals. So for me, same thing on seller finance. Funny enough today, I'm texting a lady named um, Weird. Her name is Debbie too. Debbie's the agent we're gonna go see today. And also I was texting another lady named Debbie who I bought the houses on Morton from. If you guys remember the houses on Morton, it's two houses, same lot. Eric, you remember those, right? Seller finance, I paid 50 grand over retail. And, and the value of the properties are going down. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose everything. The equity is gone. Oh my gosh. That's what I would say if I was dumb, okay? I bought the property because it cash flows. And I texted Debbie today and I thanked her. This is literally my, one of my last text messages I sent. Let's check it out. If you can get, yeah, there you go. I invited Debbie today to season two premiere of Triple Digit Flip. She said she would, but she has a family commitment. She says, thank you for the invite. And I said, no problem, you're my bank and I wanna be your friend. Really appreciate you guys, okay? That is a seller that sold to me not on subject two, but they sold to me on 0% seller finance. That seller sold me two houses, 50 grand over retail, and the market is currently going in a downward direction. Am I worried? No, because I have patience. I set up that property as a sober living facility. It makes me about $1,500 a month. Let me ask you a question. Are people automatically in the whole entire country going to get sober and stop doing drugs and having problems? Probably not. I think it's getting worse with all the fentanyl addictions and all that kind of stuff. So if I have a property, even though I overpaid for it, I structured the terms that I can cash flow every single day. So equity does not matter to me, cash flow does. So today we're gonna to give you guys a cool little snippet showing you guys exactly what it looks like to walk through a property with an agent on a no equity deal and how I can apply patience to that transaction and ultimately walk out the other side with hundreds of thousands of dollars.